I'm starting with a really interesting commercial that was produced in Singapore. The music is like this all the way through, so I've turned down the sound on the music. You can probably barely hear it. I hope so. It's just like clocks. But anyway, um, there's two girls. One's at the beach, <clears throat> but in a sort of a virtual beach. Like she's in a virtual 3D world. And then there's a guy who's fighting monsters. And he just fights monster after monster in a digital world. He's kicking all the monsters around. And then there's a rock star who's singing at a virtual concert. And the fans can float around in the air. And then there's a girl who's clicking lots of buttons. <clears throat> and her life is just full of text messages. But finally she gets a call from a real person. <clears throat> but she's just got this overwhelming digital. And they're all looking around and they drop their phones and their mics and they start running. Okay, and they break through the glass, a pane of glass, and they fall into water, and then out of the chaos of the water, they arise as real people, and they drink absolute vodka. <laughs> Can't wait for together in real. And that is just such a, it's such a beautiful message, and I just love it. I'm getting teared up that there's something real about real and I apologize I'm not there with you I try to do this as if I were um, but there's something magical about getting together we're built for physical interaction not just the virtual world no matter what anybody thinks and this is what I'm saying about mail this is what I'm saying about getting together for Thanksgiving. National Retail Federation says holiday sales will grow between 3.6 and 5.2. This is year over year. This is not compared to April or May or something. You know, this is compared to last holiday season. They're saying that holiday sales will be better this year than last year. That's pretty amazing, right? I think it's amazing. <clears throat> wow. And... Um, It's an average holiday sales increase of 3.5% over the last five years. Now, I know Joe Biden's going to fix all the things Trump broke, but I don't know what that is. And, you know, this is good news for, for, for everybody, I think. Um, I'm expecting to spend quite a bit. I ha yeah, we had the best year we've had in 20 years for modeling and machine learning. And... Um, you know, people are starting to get it, I think. They're starting to get that mail is the answer. Um, households have strong balance sheets supported by a strong stock market, rising home values, and savings boosted by the government stimulus. That didn't really affect me much at all, but it, I'm sure it does some. Okay, now here's some interesting stories. And these both came across my desk like the last couple days. Um, the Royal National Institute of Blind People is urging the UK's biggest retailers to make their Christmas advertising accessible sight with to people with sight loss or actually the blind. I was a little worried that in that headline the word blind wasn't used and I wondered if it was politically incorrect to say blind but that's the name of their organization and it is used in the first sentence so I'm gonna say that you know I have a friend who is pretty much totally blind and um, he talks about that there are some blessings that have happened in his life. Uh, he's an amazing guy, just an amazing guy, and uh, I really love him. But um, sight loss absolutely implies loss, like only loss, whereas blindness is a is a actually a a positive or it's a, a an attribute. <clears throat> anyway, if you into language, anyway, um, so they are urging. They urged advertisers to, uh, to do AD-enabled, audio description-enabled, which I just did on the commercial. If you're on my podcast, you just heard me describe the commercial for, for Absolute. Okay? I don't know how this works in the real world, but John Lewis, I did their commercial, and Aldi both actually implemented this year AD-enabled. So if you're ignoring this capability... It's something you should consider in your advertising. And I thought it was really an excellent point that if you could just 
inexpensively add, uh, you know, like a, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit like closed captioning, um, but that, you know, but, but it's an audio track that does that. Um, should be relatively inexpensive and you could reach an extra 2 million viewers. I think the UK's population is about 80 million, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but last I checked. And so that's in more than 2%, 3% almost. Um, so 3% of the United States audience would go from 100 million, 120 million households. It would be adding another 4 million, 5 million uh, if you do that to your ads. On the same vein, and we talked about integrity yesterday, um, on the same vein, uh, Sainsbury's became Sainsbury's, and it's actually right on the sign. They changed the sign at the store in Bath. Uh, and they created the first signing store and changed the sign for the hard of hearing, attracting worldwide media recognition, including me. Uh, so some employees got together and said, we should call it Sainsbury's and, and, and teach the employees sign language, at least, you know, a few basic words so that, you know, how much, <laughs> where is, I don't know, how do I find, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, like when I was in Turkey, the, the, the couple of words we knew, which one was how much, kachpara, I think in Turkish is how much, remember that. Um, so, you know, this is the kind of thing that you can do to actually bring value to the world uh, that doesn't really erode your margin and can get you some positive, you know, it's much more positive to actually do something than it is just to talk about social injustice in some category because you know some of us are disadvantaged you know obviously i have i have uh multiple learning disabilities and i don't mean to make fun of that but i had a rocky road through elementary and high school obviously college was better because i could do it what i wanted a little more okay so now we're going to help you with turkey with your turkey uh slip some sliders into your into your turkey this thanksgiving and this idea was apparently invented in 1991 i somehow missed it we were pretty busy i've never been a fan of stuffing per se i don't know why i don't like the spices but i think i might like sliders jammed into a turkey um they actually recommend 10 to 12 sliders jammed into the cavity uh in the article it mentions that they now have impossible sliders um, I think that's pretty funny since uh, you're shoving it into a big cavity of meat. <laughs> so if you're avoiding meat, I don't think this is, the, you know, the impossible slider is the place to, to, to carry that out. But that's just FYI. Okay, now here's the problem. And this is a, another fascinating tidbit you won't get anywhere else. The pandemic shook up this year's turkey market. Okay. So Butterball, which sells one in three turkeys in America, will probably have the busiest phone line. There's a turkey talk line in case you need help with your turkey. Okay. Now, one of the things that we do with a turkey, so you could still, and this would be what I would recommend to the retailers or to, you know, if they wanted to pivot, you could pivot to turkey breasts, you know, as a substitute, which is not quite as big not as much, you know, and, and maybe sell drumsticks by the side. Like they do in, in chicken, uh, you know, I really like the thighs, but they didn't, you know, used to have to buy a whole chicken, cut up all the pieces. I didn't like it. It always came with a neck when I was a kid, and we never ate that. <laughs> but it was interesting that it was in there and, the, you know, and the internal organs. Um, so... Anyway, that would be one pivot that I would have suggested if you took your big turkeys and just basically parted them out so that the portion size would be a little easier to manage. I, I, we do grill turkeys, and we grill just the turkey breast. Uh, always, I always like the breast side down. It doesn't get the beautiful look, but it keeps the breast more moist because it, doesn't, you know, it isn't up in the, in the high heat and lose all the moisture. Uh, so it sort of mediates the turkey a little bit uh, so those are my suggestions if you have a big turkey if all you can find is a big turkey after you thaw it out you might want to part it up and um and 
because when I do it, when I carve a turkey, I don't carve the breast on the turkey. You get much better slices if you cut the breast off, put it on a cutting board, and cut very smoothly through it. Make beautiful slices to go with the slices of your canned cranberry sauce. <clears throat> anyway, what what the big change this year is is that, and it doesn't say that in the in the in the headline, but smaller birds are the key this year. <clears throat> People are buying smaller birds because they're limited in their get-together size, and um, so we're we're having our small-ish get-together. Um, my daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter are coming on Christmas this year. We have to alternate, and unfortunately for them, uh, they may have to have a, a gathering in the snow because they live in Minnesota and the governor doesn't like Thanksgiving or Christmas, I think. But Walmart is still open and Target. Anyway, <clears throat> with those thoughts, that's all I have for today. We're going to be very festive this week. Low impact, not hard. But remember, the virtual world is virtual. It's not really the way we connect. So I hope if you don't have anybody to connect with that you can find a church or other area of faith to connect with or find a restaurant that's that's open and get together with someone find someone to get together with social distance sit at opposite ends of the table have a great day i'm john miglosh happy thanksgiving bye bye